Hello and welcome. Um, today I want to spend a few minutes talking about uh, the spinal nerves as they exit into the neck region. So these are the cervical spinal nerves. To do this I want to uh, firstly draw a very artistic representation of a neck, a rectangle. Remember, and here's the head at the top here, what we're going to do is look at the head from two views. This is going to be the first view. We're going to look from the dorsal surface, so that's from the back, and look at the neck and how the spinal nerves are arranged on the dorsal surface. Remember that um, each spinal nerve comes as a pair, and we'll draw it segmentally down here. There's eight, seven, you notice how we're drawing these segmentally. In fact, the lower uh, six spinal nerves come out segmentally and supply the neck in sort of, I suppose, what you call is sort of like a pile of pizza boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we've messed up the spacing. Do remember that in reality these are spaced very evenly along the uh, neck. Um, so each spinal nerve... Uh, like we said before, spinal nerves are mixed nerves, so these would supply motor and sensory to that little region within the spinal nerve. So for example, this, this pair here would supply that sort of area there like that, and uh, so on and so forth down the neck. The uh, interesting part comes to the very top of the neck where the last two pairs of spinal nerves are actually arranged quite differently. Spinal nerve 1 actually never makes it to the surface, so it never has a cutaneous output. It actually stays within the sub-occipital triangle in the little bunch of muscles that are there to control the movement of the last two well, of the first two vertebra, and to keep this an extremely stable area. Remember, the spinal cord that runs down this area, so the very first part of the spinal cord that's running down inside the vertebral canal here, this area of spinal cord is actually still part of the medulla and contains some of the very special, uh, important parts of... Uh, human function, such as respiration and cardiac output, and heart rate. Um, so the, the first spinal nerve remains within that suboccipital triangle to control the muscles around that critical bit to make sure movement is uh, well managed. That means that the output of the second spinal nerve has a significant area to cover. And in fact, it's a, a substantially larger spinal nerve that ends up travelling up the neck and onto the back of the head, into the uh, occipital region of the head. And this is called the greater occipital nerve. And the greater occipital nerve has a sensory output, and that sensory output, or, or cutaneous output, covers a whole region, including the upper part of the neck and down into uh, and up into the back of the head. So this is uh, the dorsal view, and in fact the dorsal view is relatively um, boring in a sense. It's uh, fundamentally segmental in its approach, except for the two little quirks for spinal nerve 1 and spinal nerve 2. What I want to do now is let's move on down the page here, we'll roll down a wee bit, and let's now talk about the ventral surface, which is a much more complex problem. So on the ventral surface, again we're going to draw our very artistic neck, rectangle of a neck. But more interesting on the ventral surface, we're actually going to add some more artistic diagrams, which is actually some arms. So I'm going to call that an arm. I'm not even going to bother trying to draw a hand on the end of this arm, but remember, an arm involves a hand. Right, let's, why not? Here we go. Let's remember that an arm also includes a hand. Um, the other thing I'm going to put on the bottom of this diagram is the diaphragm, because uh, 
remember that the diaphragm is actually a derivative of the neck, a derivative of the ventral part of the neck. And you may not know, but the arm is actually a uh, derivative of the ventral part of the neck. And the reason we know these are derivatives of the neck is their innervation. So if we look at the innervation of the diaphragm, for example, we see that uh, ventral primary ramo, C3, 4 and 5, actually run down as what we call the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve, that is Cs 3, 4 and 5, run down as the phrenic nerve to supply the diaphragm. And to emphasise that the derivative of the arm is the ventral part of the neck, the anatomical ventral primary rami from the last four remember we are only drawing one side of this story so remember it's symmetric on the other side the 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 last four ventral primary rami of these spinal nerves go off to supply the arm and this forms what we call the brachial plexus so this brachial plexus is formed by ventral primary rami of the spinal nerves, the last four spinal nerves of the neck. The problem now becomes sort of a <laughs> sort of a, a robbery, which means we can't have segmental supply to the cutaneous area of the neck because these ventral primary rami have gone off to, to supply the arm. So we now have to find a solution to supply this part of the neck. And the solution is rather simple. The solution is that the top four, three or four, depends what you read, the top three or four ventral primary rami form this great big loop that loops down around the neck to form what you were here regularly called the answer, answer, just means a loop, answer, cervicalis. Well, I'm not sure if the spelling's right there, but that'll do. The answer cervicalis. And the answer cervicalis is a uh, grouping together of C1, 2, 3, possibly 4, to form these loop, this loop. And this loop has a whole bunch of little cutaneous branches that come off all the way down it. And those cutaneous branches, remember it's symmetric, there'll be one on the left and one on the right in the end, but those uh, cutaneous branches come off to supply the structures in the neck. There, the answer cervicalis come, actually goes by another name as well, and that's purely because we see a... Um, one of the large cranial nerves sort of run past the top here. In fact, the twelfth cranial nerve, called the hypoglossal nerve. So sometimes the top of the answer cervicalis and the hypoglossal nerve in this area here, the these two structures um, physically run with each other. So sometimes the answer cervicalis is actually called the answer hypoglossy. It's really not, um, there's no functional relationship between the two, it's purely a fact that they run together. So in summary, this is the ventral uh, nerve supply to the neck, remembering that the diaphragm and the arm are actually structures derived from the neck, and we know that because their nerve supply comes from the neck. Uh, the arm is through the brachial plexus, the lower four um, uh, ventral primary rami, and the diaphragm through C3, 4 and 5 via the phrenic nerve. Um, the upper part of the neck is supplied by answer cervicalis, which is this large loop that runs around the neck, quite superficial, that uh, has branches off it in the upper area of the neck, but also has branches running off it in the lower part of the neck, to cover for the loss of the other ventral primary rami.